We're going to shape the handle next. You want to start with a blank that is you know, maybe five or six inches longer than what you need because we're going to need to clamp this in a vise to, to shape the end that uh, attaches to the head. As far as the shape goes, you want something that is oval. If you make the handle round, it's going to be hard to get a sense of, of which way the head is facing when you're hitting it. You don't want to have to stare at it to, to do that. I've done, I don't know, maybe a dozen of these, and I've played around with different shapes. Uh, this one is okay. What I find is I was thinking that, that tapering this, so it's pretty wide at the, the far end, would make it feel more secure. But, but it turns out it actually does not work that well. You kind of feel like you've got a good grip at the bottom, but then at the top, it, it just doesn't feel like there's much there to hang on to. And this one is, is not particularly oval. This was, I made this one quite a while ago. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this is all brass. It's got more of an oval handle. It's not quite as tapered as this other one. And this feels this feels much, much better, much more secure. This is a Japanese hammer that I've had for quite a while. And it's definitely oval, but it almost has no taper. And it actually feels pretty good, even though this is a pretty small handle. So I, I think what's most important is that you make it oval and, and just don't taper it too much. At the head end, you want about 9 sixteenths diameter. No, no, certainly no bigger than 5 eighths. It just looks heavy up there if you go uh, any bigger than that. You want it round because that's how the uh, the tenon cutter registers. It's it's a conical round interface, and the, the more you know symmetric you get it, the better off. So ideally, about 9 sixteenths round at this end, oval at the other end not too tapered and should be good to go. To start, I'm going to clamp this in a vise. I'm going to start with a draw knife because I have one and I, I, we need to remove a fair amount of material to get to that 5 eighths at the other end. And as I get closer, I'll switch to a spoke shave and finish it up. I'm going to start by just putting a pencil mark in the middle just to help me keep track of what's going on when I start uh, shaving here. Now I'm seeing here I've got some grain that's diving in there so this might not be the best piece of wood for this. Okay I switched to another piece. That, that grain wasn't parallel enough. Okay, I've got this roughly shaped now and there is some kind of chunks there, but uh, those should clean up with the spoke shave. So I'm going to switch to the spoke shave next. Now, personally, I prefer to push a spoke shave. So I'm going to flip this around. Uh, I mean, it's certainly possible to pull a spoke shave, but uh, I'm, I'm more comfortable pushing. So you can see at this end, I'm, I'm you know roughly centered around there. So I'll, I'll make that closer as I go here. Now, I like to have my spoke shave set up so it's taking a heavier cut on the right side than on the left side. So I can kind of fine tune my cut. There's a fine cut and there's a heavier cut there. So that makes it a little easier to work. It's a good idea once in a while to, to take it out of the vise and I'm, I'm just siding down the length of this to make sure I'm staying fairly symmetric. Like right now I can see I got a little bit of a curve that way. So I need to take a little more off here. So do that, do that occasionally and make sure you're on the right track. Now I had to switch to another piece again. That other one still had some wonky uh, grain in it. So I'm kind of back where I was before. I've you know sided down this. It's looking pretty uh, symmetric and nice. The other thing I want to do is just you know hang on to it and get a sense. Does that feel about right? Which it does. 
So, and remember, it's going to be, what, eight, nine, at, mo at most, maybe 10 inches long, something like that. So that's feeling good. So I'll continue, uh, continue shaping. That needs to go a little smaller and a little rounder. I'm pretty happy with the shape now. It feels good in my hand. And that's pretty round there. It's, it's you know, about 9 16 diameter. So I'm going to switch to my, my Lee Nielsen spoke shave. I, this is more like a smoothing plane. The other, the other spoke shave is more like a jack plane. So I'm just, just going to finish up uh, shaving this a little bit just to smooth out some of the facets. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put the tenon on. I'm looking at this with a with a point light source now, and this is going to allow me to see if there are some some facets. You know, like there's a there's a high spot there, there's a sharp ridge there, so that that will allow me to fine tune this a little little bit more. Next up, I need to create the tenon on the end of the handle, so I've got it clamped in a vise horizontally. This is the uh, tenon cutter, it goes in a drill. And I'm gonna you know, spin the drill fast and just push this on. Now it's really, really important that I get this parallel to there. And I can see this way if it's parallel, but I can't see that way. So you wanna get another person, you really can't do this by yourself. You wanna get another person who's looking from this side to tell you where you're at. And then the other thing I'm gonna to do to make that uh, more stable, I'm gonna hold my hand here up against my leg, because if I'm doing it like this as I push, it's, it's easy to move it up and down. Whereas if I've got it against my leg and I'm just moving my leg forward, I'm, I'm more likely to keep it horizontal. So I've got my wife over here off camera. She's going to tell me if I'm okay, and I'm going to go ahead and, and drill this. Okay. Okay. Uh, you just go until the cutter stops cutting. That went pretty well. Now, uh, my wife said I dropped a little bit. Now, one thing that I should have pointed out, when I had this in the vise, I had it in there so so the oval is horizontal because you can you can live with a little bit of misalignment this way right because when you're using the hammer you're not really going to notice if if it's slightly crooked this way but what you definitely don't want is it misaligned this way right you don't want to be hammering and the head's up or down so so it's much easier to see that if you're you're doing that alignment with the drill. The other thing I want to point out, notice I'm, I'm pretty asymmetric here now. So I'm going to put this back in the vise and use the spoke shave and, and take some material off of the side just to kind of straighten that up a little bit. Right? If, I, if I take more material off, off this side, that'll, that'll look more symmetric. All right, I did a little more fine tuning on the handle, so that looks pretty symmetric now. Next up, we'll fit check the head and cut the uh, notch for the wedge. Okay, that looks good. It fits, there we go, all the way down. So that little chamfer you put inside there fits nicely on there. I can put that on there so it's parallel to, uh, to the handle. So we'll do the... Uh, the notch next. So I'm going to cut the, the notch for the width. So I just want a, a V and it's a little tricky cutting this. Uh, it's it's going to vibrate a little just because I have to clamp it down low. And I want to go perpendicular to the growth rings. So the growth rings are going that way. So I'll just... All right, got a little bit of an angle. That looks about right. Now, instead of trying to cut it, you know, the other way, I'm going to flip it around. That usually is a little easier to get a symmetric uh, cut there. Okay, not... Perfectly in the middle, but it's going to be just fine. 
I just noticed that wasn't quite straight all the way down. Okay, that looks okay. We'll make the wedge next. So I've just got a piece of 3 8 thick cherry, right? That's the same diameter as that. And I'm, I'm going to cut a wedge and I'm just, you know, eyeballing that angle. So that looks that looks good. Now it's going to bottom if I leave it sharp like that. So I'm going to blunt the uh, end of it with a chisel. I've got some epoxy mixed up and I'm going to put a little bit got a stick here just kind of get the inside of that. wet with epoxy. I want to put some on here, but I don't want to, you know, put on so much that when I put this on, it all just squishes out on the, on the bottom. So I'm just going to uh, kind of smear, smear that on there towards the top. Don't want a lot of excess there, and I, but I definitely want some in the notch. Now, before I did this, I, I took one last look at the handle, make sure it was smooth and no no major facets, things like that. So now it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter this way or that way, and unless you have some something you're concerned about. But you definitely want it parallel, right, to your your oval, your flats on the handle. So. I am siding down here and making sure this is parallel to the to the front jaw of the visor. So that looks good. And that looks like it's down all the way. And I did get a little squeeze out. We'll clean that off when we're done there. And then a little, little bit of epoxy on the wedge. That should fit in there. And it might be a touch tight. Yeah, I should have should have checked that ahead of time. So I need to take a little off with a chisel. There we go. There we go. Use my hammer here. Nice and solid, got a little squeeze out there. Okay, we'll let that dry and then we'll trim it off. And I just realized I want to make, want to make sure I wipe off that extra down there. So I'm trying not to smear it too much. So I'm just taking a paper towel here. The epoxy's dry now and I've got the uh, parts and device here and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut cut off the top of the tenon. I've got the head back in vice this time, you know, the end of the tenon's facing up. So I'm going to use my chisel to to clean off the the top of the tenon here, get it flush. This is a little tricky. You, you want to take off a little bit of time. I'm going to come in from either side. Now you could, of course, sand it, but it, it's hard to sand this because you end up scratching up the brass again and, and you get a lot of the metallic shavings and things in that end grain. So I find it's, it's better just to very carefully come in here and, and clean this up with a chisel. And I just, I just leave it with the little facets from the chisel. I think that actually looks nice. Well, I ended up doing what I said I wasn't going to do, which was I, I did sand the uh, the top face of this. Uh, it turned out I'd forgotten. I had never really cleaned up the exit hole when I drilled through the uh, brass. 
And so it wasn't a very clean surface there. So in trying to clean it up, I ended up scratching things up. So I ended up just sanding this. And I, it still looks fine, but you can see here, it looks a little cleaner on this one. This is one I made a while ago. And I only used a chisel on this one here. Some of the grit from the brass got into there and it kind of darkens things up. But it still looks fine after a while. It probably won't look that much different. The last thing I want to do is cut cut the handle to length. So before I do that, you know, this is this is the last time I'm going to be able to take the spoke shave to it at all. So I just want to make sure everything feels good. That looks okay. Uh, I want to get a sense of, you know, where it's comfortable to hold it. So kind of make a note here. I want to cut it about there. Put a pencil line there. And you might want to look, so I, I have found sometimes that, you know, when you decide to cut it, uh, you haven't really or you haven't really spoke shaved all the surfaces. So you make sure they're all nice and clean. And in this case, they look pretty good. I might want to uh, round because I'm, I'm not quite symmetric here. So I'm going to round a little bit more. But then as soon as I do that, I'll, I'll clamp this in a vise and we'll, we'll cut that off. I did the final tweaks on the handle and I've got it clamped in the vise. Now that we've made that cut, you know, we've got a sharp edge there. So what I like to do is just chamfer that edge. Now you can, uh, you know, go to a disc sander and just spin it around. I, I usually do that, but of course, you can also do it by hand. So I've just got some hundred grit paper here. And we'll just put a nice chamfer all the way around there. Okay, a little more cleanup and, and I'm good to go. I, I Once I got the handle cut and I did the chamfer, I could see, you know, the cross section of the handle and it wasn't quite symmetric. So I did a little more uh, work with the spoke shave, and I'm happy with that now. And I, you know, I had scratched the top a little bit doing all that, so I, I took the steel wool and cleaned it up a little bit more. So I think we're good to go, ready to go adjust some hand planes.